So, did you buy a Node MCU ESP12E ESP8266 board with the hope of breadboarding it, only to find this disappointing result? That the outer two rows of pins go on the outer two rows of holes of your breadboard. Well, today I'll show you a solution for this problem. What I'm going to do is take this breadboard, cut it down the middle, and secure the two resulting pieces onto a piece of plywood so I get the appropriate spacing and the most number of pins available for breadboarding my Node MCU board. We'll see that very soon in the next segment. Stay tuned. Now, with this miter, miter jig, and this hacksaw, I'm going to cut the breadboard in half and mount the two pieces appropriately spaced on this piece of plywood. I might cut this plywood down a little bit as it's much longer than the breadboard. I'll think about whether I want to have that extra overhang or if I just want to cut it down to, you know, about that long or that long. All right, so I won't bore you with the tedium and I'll go ahead and cut the breadboard in half through the middle. Well, I've now finished cutting my breadboard in half, and I've sandwiched my Node MCU board in between the two halves of the breadboard to give the maximum spacing between them, and in addition, the maximum number of holes outside rows of holes, outside the two sides of the Node MCU board itself. I have four rows on either side. So I can do plenty, not just with jumpers horizontally, but possibly jumpers or components vertically. What's great about this breadboard is if I flip it, you'll see there's an adhesive backing. So I can stick it on to the piece of plywood below. And that came off. And that came off. I might have videos in the future where I demonstrate puny forth on my Node MCU ESP8266 board. And when I plan to use it as a Wi-Fi Wi -Fi, um, bridge for ERTA devices as well as programmable calculators. Anyway, I've taken away the backing from these adhesive strips and I can flip this around, rotate it properly, get the right spacing, and then press this thing down on the wood. And indeed, it doesn't move. And there you go. With just a few quick steps, I've modified this cheap $1 breadboard to give me the most spacing possible with my $5 Node MCU board. I hope this is helpful. Please stay tuned for those videos I mentioned. One where I try this out with Puny Fourth, and second, as I mentioned before, where I use this to make a programmable calculator and or ERTA interface over Wi-Fi. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave your thoughts, suggestions, questions, and comments in the comments section down below. Take care and have a great rest of your week.